couple. Is that the first time we anybody, have, ever, anybody in the media has ever asked you what what's stuff ahead. you have? Is that the first time anybody in the media has ever asked you what uh, lip stuff you have? Well, it just looked familiar. Well, he saw it. Yeah, he didn't ask me. It was just kind of a conversation piece. It was the bad part of being a shit conversation piece. <laughs> I, re I read and recognized Gene. There you know, I was. There you go. All right, I'm gonna hit record here. Watcher on the wall. Gene, in a game like Campbell, obviously outcome not in doubt. Um, but just how do you evaluate specifically the first half for you guys? Really, you know, in a game like that, you out you evaluate it by execution. And uh, there was times in the first half where we executed well, and there was times where we were a little bit inconsistent. Uh, I think we made some adjustments at halftime with some things that helped. And, um, but overall, just in a game like that, it's really never about the opponent. It's really about yourself uh, and how you execute your technique, um, how you communicate, things of that nature. So that's really kind of what we evaluated Sunday. And for the most part, the lion's share of the game, we were, we were where we needed to be and, and did the things we needed to do. Uh, but there were also some things that showed up that, you know, uh, we had to fix during the game and, um, you know, things that we can continue to build on. On the tempo issue, obviously, it's, it gives a lot of teams trouble. Have you guys, like, identified why it has affected the defense the last three weeks, seemingly more so than it did earlier this season? Is there some change? Yeah, I think Saturday we handled it much better. I thought Saturday we had a really good plan and it was clear. And, um, it, it really wasn't an issue, and early on, that, that was a big deal. They tried to go tempo. Uh, matter of fact, they tried to go tempo most of the game until the game got kind of out of hand. But um, so, uh, in assessing, you know, issues when there is tempo, uh, it's usually an alignment problem or a communication problem. But I felt like Saturday we, we dealt with that much better. I think everything was cleaner and much clearer. Uh, we spent a lot of time on it last week, so. You know, in the end, you want to be able to spend time on things in practice. You want to see it show up in the game, but um, tempo was not a factor Saturday. Gene, what have you guys been doing in practice to prep for that tempo and kind of working on the alignment and communication? Yeah, just giving a lot of time to it and giving a lot of reps and investing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of time in reps, really. And, and so uh, did it more last week than we've done it. And I feel like, you know, just zeroing in on the problem, zeroing in on the calls that we would use in a tempo situation, uh, making it very clear, you know, what everybody's job is and uh, simplifying ways to get aligned uh, was kind of the main event. So, as I said, we did it last week in practice. We felt good. We, we worked it four days last week. Um, so we felt like, you know, we were in a good place with it. Max said he thought this game this past weekend came at a good time for you, that he'd rather do that than have an open date this time of year. Was it an opportunity for you guys to fancy maybe hit a little bit of a reset button in some respects? You know, I think so, uh, to a degree. You know, this time of the year, um, you know, you have to execute at a high level, particularly uh, with the way we have to finish up the season and who we're playing. So, um, you know, after Georgia Tech, when we didn't play well, uh, it was a good time for us to get back on track, back to the fundamentals, back to the, uh, you know, back to the things that we did earlier in the season when we were extremely productive. And so most of the game, I feel like we did that. I feel like we, uh, you know, got some things cleaned up and some things cleared up and got to play a lot of guys and got to play a lot of young guys. Um, and that's important in two ways. The, the first way is that it lets your older guys that have played so much you know, kind of back off on reps. So it's good to get, get them some rest, some, some rest. And then the second thing that was really good about it is when we put uh, some of our backups in, um, they played well. There, there wasn't a, a huge drop off, in, you know, in terms of production and, you know, offensively, the, you know, Campbell kept their starters in the lion's share of the game. So it was good to see our young guys get in there, get those reps, you know, uh, against their first team. Uh, and then get some of our older guys a rest. But um, it was good to be able to, you know, be productive and do some things well yesterday uh, in preparation for the three weeks that we're going to need it coming up for sure. Going in, going in, for most of you, looking at the Duke game, you're obviously thinking about facing Ryan Leonard and the things he brings to the game. But 
What do you know about Grayson Loftus, the new freshman who had to step in there last week? Right? Yeah, um, uh, he's, he's an impressive guy. I don't, I don't think he gets rattled at all, you know, and, and you're looking at a very young guy. Uh, you know, who starts a game on national TV last week. That's a tough, that's a tough gig, and he didn't flinch. Um, you know, he came in some at the end of the Louisville game uh, and, you know, played several plays there. Um, very poised for a young guy. I think what's, what really helps him is that you've got an offensive line that's got so much experience, whether they were transfers or not, but their offensive line you just take, and they've juggled their offensive line some, but give or take, and you take their offensive line, these guys have averaged over 30 starts per, per guy. So that really helps when you have that kind of offensive line and a running game uh, that's been very effective. You know, the running game in most of the games, other than Louisville, but the, most of the big games where they played Florida State and Notre Dame and uh, NC State, you know, they're, they're running for around 200 yards per game against really good defenses. So obviously that helps him as a young guy. He doesn't feel like he has to win every game. Uh, and the run game is what helped him beat Wake, right? So uh, he's got a very experienced offensive line in front of him. He's got a running game uh, that's really, really effective and physical. And, and so that takes the pressure off him. But he's a very poised young man. Um, like I said, uh, there was two, two turnovers in the Wake game, early in the game, that could have rattled somebody. And it did not, it did not rattle him. So uh, very impressed with him. And you know, as you start and you kind of get that first start under your belt, the next one's become easier. Uh, and so, and I'm sure they'll figure out what he does best, you know, and continue to work on that. But uh, we're expecting him to be the guy. And, uh, but he's an impressive young guy. Talk about you know, this. When you're scouting a guy who's played so few, you know, you played the weight game, you got there do you go back and watch any of his high school tape to kind of understand as soon as he's there, or is it mainly just seeing what he's done? So yeah, it's mainly just seeing what he's done there because, I mean, everything changes with, you know, who you have around you. What, you know, what is the scheme that, the, that he's in? Uh, what do they feel comfortable with him in terms of uh, routes and protections? So we're looking at everything here with him, uh, and we'll go do a deep dive on every, you know, on every rep he's taken. Uh, but you can really get a good, a good idea of the Wake Forest game, right? So they went to that game, you know, knowing that it was his first start. How are they going to win the game? Uh, and they did it by running the football again, right? And not putting him in harm's way um, and protecting him, you know. So um, I'm sure it'll be very similar in nature to how they move forward with him. Um, but like I said, he's an impressive young guy. That's, that's the question I have for you, Gene, with, with Loftus is when you see – I mean, they were conservative with him up until the fourth quarter for, for good reason, obviously. I mean, he's making his first start, um, trying to win a game. Uh, when, you see, when you see the way they have used him, there's certain things in your playbook that you try to dust off in terms of, we need to get after this guy. He's a very young dude to try to rattle him and try to get him uncomfortable. Is there, I don't know, an area that you flip to and call on that you might not do against you know, a Jordan Travis or somebody who's super experienced. You know what I mean? Like, is, sure. there, is, there, is there stuff you try to use to get after him? Yeah, I, I, you know, the, the number one thing with Duke is that you better stop that run game. That, that's, that's the number one issue, right? Uh, if you can't do that, then they have an open playbook. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the main event. And then secondly, um, anytime you have a young guy and you can, and you can get pressure on him, whether that's – you know, resurrecting something that's in the past that's a, a great, you know, pressure uh, or two, uh, or whether it's just a four-man pass rush, obviously that's the key, right, to, to getting to a young guy's pressure. So we'll look at everything. We'll look and see, you know, what we feel like is the best thing. But the main thing is just being sound and executing what you have, uh, not necessarily having to go back and dive down and figure out, you know, what you've done in the past. But what are we executing at a high level right now? A, to stop the run, and then B, you know, to affect the quarterback. So that's, that's really kind of the main event. Gene, uh, with the Waters and Calhoun, they're obviously pretty electric at the skill positions for Duke. Do they present sort of a similar set of challenges as the skilled guys from Georgia Tech did with their, with their speed and sort of their maneuverability in the open field? Yeah, so a couple things. Number one, their tailbacks are really, really good. 
Um, they're physical, they're fast, uh, they do a great job uh, after the first bit of contact. Uh, so that's one item right now that's very challenging. That's why they, they run the ball so well. And then on, on the perimeter, the wideouts that they have, very skilled, very talented. Um, they, uh, they present some issues right now with their speed, obviously. Um, I'm not going to say they're you know, any different than some of the other guys that we saw at Georgia Tech and Miami, uh, but they're in that skill set level, right? They're really, really good and, and really good with the ball in their hands once they catch it. Uh, you know, so like anybody, you know, we have to be able to, you know, make sure that we have a good plan and always knowing who's where uh, and things of that nature. So, uh, but running the ball, taking shots down the field, we fully expect that because of the speed they have at their wide out positions with a couple of their guys. Uh, and what, what's best, you can run the football, then you play action and you can throw it up deep. And, and that's happened, right? It happened at NC State, you know, I'm a huge play on NC State on a double move. Um, so they've got some guys that can go, so we just have to uh, be very sound, uh, always know where those guys are, and we have to execute you know, our technique. Gene, um, Mario Campbell is obviously one of those guys that got in uh, during camp. He actually got in a little bit early, you know, earlier and then played late. Mm -hmm. After the game, Cedric Gray spoke very highly of him, was talking a lot about uh, you know, the skill set that he had and you know, kind of the impact he can make you know, years down the line. But when you look at Mario Campbell, like, what, is, what is your assessment of him as a player? Instincts, great instincts. We saw that in high school. There's two things that jumped off the film to us when we evaluated him as a player coming out of high school. Number one was his physicality. It was, I mean, it just jumps off the film. If you go back and look at his high school film and the physicality that he played with was off the chart and then his instincts. And again, you know, you said as the example, said Gray has really, really good instincts. So. At linebacker, that's, it's, it's important everywhere, but at linebacker, there's so many, um, there, there's, there's so much value in being an instinctive player because you have blockers in your face and sometimes you gotta know whether to go over them and under them. Uh, when you're rushing the passer, know where to go. Amari has that exact same set of instincts that Seth has. Um, you know, he's just productive. You know, whenever he goes in there, he's, he's productive. He gets his hands on a football when he's on a blitz, or he slips a block and makes it for a tackle for a loss. Um, we've seen that, and we know that he has that, uh, you know, capability. And I think that's going to make him a really special player down the road. And again, we're going to continue to try to make sure that we get him some reps. We got him in, I think the third series is when we got him in, um, in the game, and we'll continue to do that. Um, he's getting better and better in practice uh, every day. And we think he's going to be a really special player. So then, kind of going off of that, I mean, just what's the confidence of you all having him as, you know, Cedric Grader? But he said that, you know, he expects to leave after this year. So I guess with Campbell filling in, like, what's your confidence level in him kind of really being that next guy up? Uh, a very high uh, confidence level in Lamar in whatever we ask him to do. You know, we'll deal with that, you know, when it happens in terms of, you know, which linebacker spot he plays in and things of that nature because, you know, Essentially, the linebacker spots are very are very similar, you know, in terms of the mic and the will and things of that nature. But he's just a natural player, so uh, we think he's going to be a really, really good player. We'll figure out where he fits. Right now, he's a mic, uh, but we've actually thrown him in there a little bit uh, here and there uh, as a possible will and made his world very small there as well in an attempt to try to get set off the field a little bit. We've done that in practice, haven't necessarily done it in a game. Uh, but he's really smart. He's got great football IQ, so he learns very, very quickly. So, but we expect him to keep growing and be a special guy here, for sure. How ready is Cedric for the NFL? He's very ready. I tell every scout that. He's extremely ready. He's got everything you want for that level. He's got the athletic ability, which that's where it starts, right? But he's got all the other intangibles that no one can measure, right? How much he loves football, how much he studies the game, his football IQ. Um, he's got the ability to do something once and retain it and have it forever. Where a lot of guys right now will take them 10, 15, you know, 20 reps to get, you know, this one concept. That, that That's not true, it's said. He's just got that type of... Uh, really special football understanding. Recall. 
great recall, but just football understanding, he just sees it. And it's hard to explain right now with guys like that. They see it, they feel it, they know where they fit, they know, they just, it's a feel for the game. So he's special and um, he's gonna play a long time out there. Does he, does he, just, if it's okay to follow up, does he ask you, like, coach, what, what do I need for yes. the next level? Like, do you, is that yes. part of just your conversation? 100% he asks that. So earlier in the year, we sat down with a couple of things that I felt like he could improve at, because he asked, he said, what can I do better? And there were some things I thought that could, you know, take his, his game to the next level, and we're actually seeing those happen in games now. So, um, yes, he's that kind of guy. He's not satisfied with where he's at. He's always going to be wanting to, to improve and get better and figure out what part of his game he can be better at. Um, and so that's another thing, that's another intangible that makes him great, right? He's never satisfied. He's very driven to be the best out there. So, uh, obviously, it shows up. We good? Great, great. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you have a great day. Appreciate it, Jeremy.